What's up? How y'all doing? It's Jared. That's not a knife. Seriously, that's that's not a knife. It's a Kimber K6S 357 six shot revolver, lightest six shot 357 on the market, and I freaking love this thing. I really do, and it's it's honestly kind of lucky for me that I do. It was a bit of a gamble when I picked it up. I wanted another 357 revolver. I had owned one in the past. Sold it off to buy something else. I owned the 44 Magnum as well, but I'll get into that. And I just, I really, you know, I wanted another 357. It was between this and a Colt King Cobra, right? The Colt King Cobra is a double action, single action, so it's got an exposed hammer. This is double action only. And I'm not the most proficient with a double action only revolver, just because I hadn't. You get in the habit, you know, I mean, you get in the habit of just cocking the hammer over and over and over again. You know, every time you take a shot when you're sitting on the range, when you have that exposed hammer. And so I knew limiting myself to the double action only is kind of going to be a learning curve. But with that, I freaking love it. I love how this thing points. This is the most naturally pointing gun I've ever owned, right? And it's not the most comfortable. Get into some problems I have here with the grip, but I actually think that I like that, right? I'm not sure, but I've got a theory that it's actually a good thing because this thing points more naturally to me, for me, than any other gun I've ever had. If I, I've, I've you know, practice, you just not practice, but do experiments with this, right? If I line up my sights at something in the room, I point this at something in the room, right? And hold it there. Just hold the gun steady, not looking down the sights. And then I look down the sights. I actually, you know, align my body and look down the sights to see where the gun is kind of pointing. It's very rarely pointing at exactly what I was trying to aim at. You know, it's something small, something on the wall. But... It, it is generally, it's in that area, you know what I mean? It's close enough that it makes me realize I'm closer when I do that than I am with this. If I take this, the Beretta and I do the same thing, I point this in a general direction, you know, it's it's close. It's obviously close because you're point shooting, you know, I'm not shooting, you know what I mean? But it's it's close, it's in the general area. This thing is closer every single time. And I, you know, no matter how I pull it out, it's just more, it's easier to get up on the target and actually, you know, see down my sights, use the sights, actually, you know, so you can actually see the sight picture there. It's easier and it's faster for me, which I just freaking love. I, you know, it's, it gives me a level of confidence knowing, you know, the 357, I've got six shots, 357, and it's just so easy and fast to use. I really do appreciate that now that I have become more proficient with the double action only trigger pull. It's, I freaking love it. There is some problems with this thing. Not that, well, there's no problems as far as functionality, just some problems with the overall finish, but the, 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 fit okay the fit and the exterior finish of this thing is impeccable i mean it is truly amazing you can see there is no 90 degree hard 90 degree angle almost anywhere on the exterior of this entire gun right right i mean on the cylinder there's a couple but it's just beautifully finished the whole way around it's extremely smooth they do that so it can come you know in and out of your pocket it's easier to be concealed carry it flies in and out of your pocket easier it's not going to snag anything that's the also the reason that it doesn't have an exposed hammer but i don't carry it concealed obviously i live in california which kind of sucks i would if i had that option but re realistically speaking I just like it for the overall aesthetics, right? I'm kind of an aesthetics guy. I like the way things look. I like smooth lines. I like flowing lines, things like that. And with the 2-inch, when they first came out with this thing, the 2-inch revolver, they had as well at the store. It was an option. It didn't have the wood grips. It had kind of the, the blue, uh, I think they're either like Packmire or... Uh, crimson tray something like that blue rubberized grips on the the two inch model and it just didn't look as good it just didn't have the same lines and the same vibe that this thing gives me overall i just really really i just freaking love this gun and i'm happy that i do because i honestly i wasn't sure that i was going to but i've really just kind of fallen in love with it with that all of that said i have actually ordered some uh, black rubber grips they'll be here in a couple days i'll do a video of actually the installation on them i the fit on this thing right you can see i like well this line right here that's really artistically done i like the way that this little line but there's the gap there's a little bit of a gap but you can see it remains perfectly consistent the entire way all the whole transition all the way around 
the fit, you know, here next to the trigger, it's just, it's got a recessed cylinder, right? Which is a large uh, advertising, you know, selling point for this gun. But with the recessed cylinder, you can notice, I mean, there's barely any light. You can see the light gap actually coming through the back of the cylinder there. So it really is just fit amazingly well. The cylinder gap, right? I had a Dan Wesson 44 Magnum with an interchangeable barrel. I only had a six inch barrel. I never had any other barrel lengths for it. But it was, I had a little shim, right? And I still I had the shims somewhere. I don't have the gun, but I've still got the little shim somewhere. And it was six ten thousandths of an inch where you, that you set the barrel gap to the cylinder, right? It was six ten thousandths of an inch shim. You just stick it in there and then t twist, tighten the barrel down, put the barrel sleeve on, tighten the nut down, and you were good to go, right? This thing, that is not six ten thousandths of an inch. I'm, I know I'm not going to be able to get any light through there. If I shine a flashlight through it and I get it at the perfect angle, let's see if I can actually do this. If I, you know, if I shine that light through there and I get it, yeah, well, will see. Oh, right there, right, right there. That is, that's not six ten thousandths of an inch. That's maybe half that. It's half something like that. I don't know what that is. So the actual cylinder gap on this thing, when there's, I've never had any problems with it touching. I've never had any problems. You can, you can now so tell that it doesn't actually rub. I've got the front of this cylinder relatively clean right now, but you can see, you know, I mean, there's no contact. The, the, that, uh, where that carbon pattern right there is perfectly symmetrical. It's even, it looks great. Just freaking amazingly done it's not perfectly finished however as far as the satin finish on here whoever did the satin finish on this revolver is seriously just sitting here with a piece of sandpaper like just 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 hitting it with a piece of sandpaper right and if you're familiar i did a review on the uh brs it's a brs alpha beast right here and it's got a little bit of problems as far as the f you know just it's not even necessarily problems, because again, it kind of comes into the overall aesthetic of this knife. I mean, it fits this knife. The fact that it's not entirely finished right there around the tank, it just fits into the primal overall attitude of this BRS, right? I like that. I don't like it on here, because you can actually see right here behind the, the cylinder release, there's a, I don't know if it's going to come across actually on camera very well, but show it on this right there. You see that? It's not even finished. They didn't even make contact to the, the sandpaper, whatever they were actually using to put that finish on, right there behind the, the that lump. I don't even know what this thing is called. But the same thing on the bottom here, you can notice the lines are actually going, the, the pattern, the scratch pattern is going this way, right? It's going horizontally. And then if you come up here, it starts to swirl a little bit. And then it's swirling more and then it goes back to horizontal and then it's vertical for a little while and it's just this you know if i got a satin knife a satin finished knife that was actually as high end as this thing is this is a 900 hundred dollar revolver it's not the highest end thing on the market but it's not a low-end gun right it's decently decently you know decently priced gun and if i got a an equivalent knife with this sort of finish this sort of satin finish i probably you know, i wouldn't send it back because it's just too much hassle for me i would just complain about it a whole lot like i'm doing with this freaking kimber i mean that's not a knock on kimber that's a knock on a certain kimber employee because this was probably done by one person and they just didn't care realistically i don't, I don't know that does bother me that's the only thing that actually has ever that's ever been a negative with this i am curious to know what the steel is that they use for this cylinder right because look at this look at how thick these cylinder walls are the reason that this is the the smallest six shot the lightest six shots 357 on the market is because it's extremely narrow in this direction here and there's not a whole lot of steel in that cylinder and it makes me wonder how they got the capability to contain the pressure from a 357 magnum cartridge with as thin of a wall of as you know that is on that cylinder there because if you look at the cylinder wall on majority of you know six shot 357 five shot 357 revolvers it's a lot thicker much thicker wall and what i suspect is it's going to be something in the actual steel alloy itself along going with the heat treatment right which 
is interesting. I mean, that that's fascinating, but I have emailed Kimber about it, and I haven't actually... I emailed them months ago when I first bought this thing, and I haven't received a response for that, so I don't suspect that I'm going to, but I really... I, I am curious to know what the alloy can... You know, the specific alloy they use in that cylinder is. The rest of the parts are cast. I know that cylinder is not cast. But... Beautifully finished. I do. This is, this is all me. You know, the there's a little bit of scratch, a little bit of dings and dents on it. That's all me. Give you a size comparison to the Beretta. Yeah, I'll do a video on this Beretta, right? If you're familiar with the Beretta 92 FS, this is gonna look kind of strange to you. I'll do a video about that. That's it. Kimber K6S. Y'all have a good one.